everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new WWE Elite figure wave to review for you guys, and it is on the brand new WrestleMania 37 Elite set. Build a figure for Paul Ellering. So if you buy the full set, you can build a figure for your Paul Ellering. I know we get Rocco, you get the two interchangeable head sculpts for Paul Ellering, you got the young old, you, you got the you got the young head sculpt, you got the old head sculpt. I think this is a pretty solid wave. We're gonna look at all the figures. I'm excited to crack them out, see what we got. If you didn't know, I mean, you've been looking at the screen for a few seconds now, but we got HBK, Edge, China, and Bill Goldberg all in this set. Pretty solid set. I think I'm pretty excited for it. I've been looking forward to these figures. We're going to cover the packaging right now. So, as you guys can see on the right side, they do have images of all of the people. They all look great. I think all of them look pretty good here. You, of course, do have your front viewing window with all four figures. So, starting off first, we have Goldberg, who comes with the head, it appears. So, the younger head skull comes with Goldberg. Rocco and the arms of Paul the Ring come with China. She looks really good in package. I like the way that looks. Next up, we have Edge, who comes with the older head sculpt and the torso. And then last but not least, we have HBK, who comes with the legs. So if you guys wanted another shot, there's all the figures. They look really, really good in package. So if you guys are mock collectors, I think you're going to enjoy these. On the right, you do get in-ring shots of each guy from the match at WrestleMania, because these are WrestleMania elites. Every single match is from a WrestleMania event. So that's pretty cool right there. And then, of course, you do have the back of the packaging with some info bio reads. If you want to read them, you can pause them as I bring them up to the screen, so I'm just going to do that real quick. You got China, you got Edge right there, and then last but not least, you have HBK. But guys, that pretty much does it for the packaging of the WrestleMania 33 figures, guys. So let's find out how good this damn wave is. How good is the Paul Ella ring? Let's crack all of them out of the packaging and find out what they're all about. Alright guys, so here's the full WrestleMania 37 wave out of their packaging. I'm pretty sure this is the WrestleMania 37 wave. It may just be the WrestleMania Build-A-Figure wave, but I'm pretty sure it's WrestleMania 37 because last year was 36, 35. You guys get the point. Nonetheless, here are all the figures. What we're going to do for this one, guys, is you guys know when we review a full set like this, we typically just start with the first figure, go through their accessories, take a look at them, do some comparisons, and move on. We're not going to spend a ton of time here because the video will probably be 40 minutes. If I did this review, typically how I do my regular 2-in-1 reviews, then it'd probably be 40 minutes long or something like that. Yeah, but I try to get all the details in there, man. I want you guys to establish how good these figures are. Are they worth spending money on and all of that stuff? If you guys would like to grab these, you can go over to WrestlingFigures.com, Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. I know their Black Friday sale is supposed to start today, so definitely go get in on that as well. But tons of great things coming in. I feel like figures have just been flying in, but let's start off with China's accessories, guys. So for her accessories, of course, she comes with her Build-A-Figure parts. First up, she does come with Rocco the Puppet, who comes with Paul Ellering, and then she does come with the arms to Paul Ellering. We will build him at the end, so don't forget, China comes with the arms and Rocco. Next up, she does come with the Women's Championship. We've seen this before, but this is probably my favorite version of the Women's Championship. When I look at this, all I think of is Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus and Lita. This is literally what I think of, because when I see this, I feel like my whole childhood, that is who was holding this championship, and it looks really good. It's more of a matte or a flat look. It's not shiny like we've seen in the past, but it has really good details. It has the WWE logos etched into the strap, and it looks good. I like this a lot, and I'm happy to add another one of those to the collection. She also comes with interchangeable fists as well as mic holding hands, if you guys were wondering. So, this is her standard accessories apart from her Build-A-Figure. Now, getting into China herself, giggity, she is in her WrestleMania X7 or WrestleMania 17 attire, and I love this attire. You know, the match wasn't the best. She pretty much squashed Ivory in this matchup, but you know, it is what it is. The head sculpt's beautiful. I think it looks just like China. I think they did a really good job of capturing the likeness. The hair sculpt's really good, and it's cool because this is a completely different head sculpt than we got with her D X two pack with Triple H. I love the top. I like the color. I like the size of her legs and everything. The one thing that I'm having a problem with is my left boot right here is super loose and I'm not sure exactly why that is, but I really like the boot mold. I like the legs. She is on pinless joints and I'm pretty sure she's on ball joints, but her split is not the best. Like she can't really do the split all that well. I think it's because this like kind of hits the hits the bottoms right here, but the color is nice. Her attire is nice. She looks like a freaking baller. She looks like she'd beat the hell out of you. So China is looking really good. I really enjoy this figure. I think, uh, I don't know. It just depends on what era of China you're going for. If you want like a really good moment for China and everything like that, then this is probably the one. But if you want your standard China to go up on your DX shelf, you probably want to go with the two pack one. But this is really awesome. And I do want to do a side by side of the two here. So it's really, dude, it, it's just so surreal seeing figures of China when we didn't think we'd ever get elites or Mattels of her. And now that we have her in the regular line, the two pack with DX and Triple H here might be a little bit harder to, you know, track down 
them, but both of these are really excellent figures, and I'm just happy to have China in my collection, so that is excellent, man. I think you, you couldn't go wrong with either one, but the WrestleMania figure is really, really nice. So, there is China. Next up, we have Edge, guys, and his accessories include the torso of Paul Ellering, as well as the older Paul Ellering head sculpt. I remember when, you guys remember when we saw the prototype of this figure on display? I think it was at, like, San Diego Comic-Con. We got the images of this, and it was on display with Elite 62, Akam, and Rezar, and we were talking about the Authors of Pain, and we thought we were going to get the Paul Ellering figure, and we never really got it, and now, finally, after all this time, we finally have it in our collections. You may even be able to make, like, Eric Bischoff or something with this build a figure, given on what you have, but we'll put this guy completely together at the end, and we'll see what he's about, but Edge does come with the torso and the head sculpt. Outside of that, he does come with interchangeable hands. He has his rock and roll hands with tape on them, because that is accurate. He wore the black hand tape. He also comes with a baseball bat that has some good wood grains in it. I like the color. Kind of flat, you know, maybe a, a dark wash of brown over this, and then wiping that off would probably bring the details out a lot better, but not a big deal there. And then his last accessory is going to be his entrance shirt. Now, I'm going to take this off of the figure real quick to show you guys this, because it kind of bothers me a little bit. So on his entrance shirt, the little work shirt that he wore at WrestleMania 22, when he took on Mick Foley, it is accurate. You guys can see it's got the little itches on the sides. It's got the Rated R Stud logo on the back, which is also accurate. The only thing I don't like is that this flap right here covers up the E, so it just says DJ. It doesn't say Edge, it says DJ. It says DJ, or DJ, or DJ, or whatever the hell. And then it also covers up the other side, which I understand, but it's rubber molded, so it's gonna do that. It also doesn't fit the figure that well, because uh, it's like really stuck on the figure. Like, if you put this on the figure, it's on there, because they gave him the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso for some freaking reason. It's really stuck on there. It's got the collar on there. I do like that they included this. We got this with Jax back in the day, and I know a lot of people used to use the Jax one for their custom WrestleMania 22 edges, but right here, getting into the figure, man, oh my god in heaven, bro. I just, I don't like this. Oh, man. Look at that neck. Look at the neck, and look at the head sculpt. I am not feeling this head sculpt, man. Like, I think they went with, like, a wide, they tried to go for, like, a wide-eyed edge, and I just don't see it, bro. I, I like other head sculpts much better. I think this head sculpt is much better, like this pissed off edge head sculpt. I think I'm definitely gonna have to do something about this guy. He needs to have a torso swap because this torso just doesn't work for me. I don't know how well this head sculpt, or how well this torso would look on, like, maybe his regular figure, but I think, I think I would have preferred the Daniel Bryan torso this time over it, even though I hate that torso for edge. I think that the perfect torso for him would be the Terry Funk or the William Regal torso. That would look excellent on this figure. I've seen customs like that. He's got his tattoos. He's got his rated R gauntlet on the left side, not on the right. I don't know how accurate that is, but he does have black hand tape. He's got his black elbow pads. Tattoo on the left shoulder. I don't think he had the rest of his tattoos, so I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I don't think he had his star tattoos just yet or any of his other stuff. Oh my god. So the torso is really, really loose. The waist isn't as loose as I would expect, because I know a lot, of, a lot of figures that have the jeans with this kind of torso usually have a really loose waist, but my torso is super loose. In the legs, I really like this. He's got the camo, like, dark charcoal gray and black, like, camo going on, and then he does have the Rated R stud logo on there, which is actually accurate. I feel like it was up here, but, you know, it's not the biggest deal, but it does, it gets hidden when you bend the knee, so that's kind of crappy. But nonetheless, here is Edge, and I actually have a custom of the Lita from this matchup. I got it from Showstopper Custom Figs, and not only is the, the, the Lita accurate, he also sculpted the chest as well, because the chest wasn't very accurate, so there you go, and she has on the same pants as Edge, as you guys can see with the rated R's there, and this is from that exact matchup. Everything is accurate to a T, and yeah, I got this made way back long ago when I first started my collection, and I still have it to this day. One of my favorite figures. Lita's one of my favorite women of all time, probably my favorite woman of all time, so I wanted to get customs made of that, and now the Edge will go perfectly with my Lita from that exact matchup. But there is the Edge figure, and at the end of the video, we are gonna rank all these guys, because I'd like to see where they all come in on a ranking scale. But next up, guys, we do have HBK, who comes with the legs of Paul Ellering, and that is it. That's all he comes with as far as uh, Build-A-Figure pieces. You guys know the Edge and China came with two different pieces of Paul Ellering. He only comes with the leg. He also has interchangeable mic-holding hands. So he has the interchangeable gloved mic-holding hands. This is from his WrestleMania 9 attire. So outside of his hands, he does come with sunglasses and his entrance shirt. And this entrance shirt is... I don't know how the hell to get this off. Okay, it clips 
clips right here at the neck. So it unclips at the neck and you'll just kind of pull this off, slide the arms back and then slide this off. I hate these rubber accessories, dude. I just, I cannot stand them. They just really hinder articulation. I guess it's not a really big deal. If you don't like to pose your figures around and you're just gonna sit it on the shelf, then yeah, that's not a big deal. But for me, man, I like to get them in here and I like to pose them around and do all kinds of crazy-ish with them. So rubber accessories like this really drive me up the wall. It is a soft, pliable material though, so it shouldn't be too hard to get off of the figure as I struggle mightily to get it off the figure. One thing I was worried about with this figure was would be is if they gave him the newer arm articulation. They actually did not. They gave him the old arm articulation, which you love to see. Same head sculpt we've gotten for Shawn Michaels a lot. It's the same one we've seen. It's got true effects though. I like the chest hair on it and everything like that. Standard gloves. I really like the attire. The black and white and like the silver zebra stripes going on look really, really good. Got the white going all through it. Really nice attire. I really like it. It's kind of like cow stripes or cow spots mixed with like zebra print. So that's really fire. You got the black open knee pads, white kick pads with the black outsoles. They look really good. I like this Shawn Michaels figure a lot. I think it looks really good. Feels really good. My right leg seems to be a little bit loose though. What's that about? What is up, man? But anyways, there is Shawn Michaels and here is his little entrance accessory that will probably never be used again. So you got sunglasses, the legs of Paul Ellering, and then you have the nice tattoos and everything with Shawn Michaels. And if you guys wanted a comparison, here is the WrestleMania 9 Shawn Michaels compared to the WrestleMania 10 Shawn Michaels in the white, black, and red attire right there. And this is what I was afraid of. I was afraid this new figure would have the old arms like that or the newer tech arms that I hate. I hate these arms. These are much better in my opinion. So I like the way that looks. If you guys wanted to see WrestleMania 9 and WrestleMania 10, you also have the Ultimate Edition Shawn Michaels right here, which you love to see right there up next to the new WrestleMania figure. Next up is the ringside exclusive uh, fix-up with the WrestleMania 14 head sculpt. Really like the way that looks. Up next to the new WrestleMania 9. And then not finally, guys, we have the WrestleMania 12 Shawn Michaels in the white, gold, and black and everything. So there's the final comparison there. Pretty good likeness. But that pretty much does it for our Shawn Michaels figure. Now let's move on to the last figure in the set, which is going to be Goldberg. And for Goldberg, he comes with our first ever Blue Universal Championship. And this looks really good. I really like the color. It's not as saturated as you would think. So it's not as saturated as the as the red Universal Championship. You guys remember when we first got it, it was super saturated. It kind of looked unrealistic. This one looks more matte and it just looks and feels better. So that is really good to see. You love to see that. I think they did a good job on the Blue Universal Championship. So if you guys want to track down a official Mattel one, I know that I've had my custom for so long that I don't even feel like we never had one. So I know a lot of people who don't have that are going to want this in their collection. You're going to have to track down the Goldberg from this set to get that figure. You also get interchangeable choke slamming hands. They always give him the choke slamming hands. So Goldberg comes with those. And he also comes with the young Paul Ellering head sculpt. So that's a really good head sculpt too. He's got a little nick on his cheek right there, but I like the way that head sculpt looks. And then last but not least, guys, is the Bill Goldberg figure from WrestleMania 36, right? Yeah, this is from WrestleMania 36, our most recent WrestleMania. And it looks like a pretty much re-release of the Raw main event ring Goldberg. I feel like the head probably is a little bit better. I like the likeness. I also like the beard down here. It loses a little bit of paint right here on the chin, but everything else considered, you know, I always feel like they make the Goldberg figure a little too short or stumpy. I feel like it looked look a lot better on the Hillbilly Gym torso, but you know, this torso still works. It looks good on it and everything. The arms look good. Tattoos look good. He's got his tattoo logo on the back of his trunks and the black and white biker trunks. Black knee pads, black short boots and everything like that. Figure feels really good. This is probably the figure that feels the best out of the set in the hand. Like it just feels tight and nice. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall over or it doesn't have any loosey goosey parts or anything. So really impressed with the Goldberg. I think they did a great, great job on it. If you guys want to do some comparisons real quick uh, with everybody else that we've gotten or with every other Goldberg. Here is the Raw main event ring Goldberg that we got before and it's pretty much the exact same. Uh, the chest hair is a little bit different. The head sculpt is more cartoony on this one of course. He does have the white around there. The trunk logo is a little bit different but essentially it is the same figure. A little bit of differences here and there. I think I do like the new WrestleMania one better. So there's that. You get the nice beard. I like the way the beard looks on this one better. It's just nice. I don't know. It's weird but you guys can let me know. There's that comparison. We also have the Entrance Greats Goldberg right here. So here's the Entrance Greats Goldberg, the Flashback WCW Goldberg in the black trunks. We also have the Elite 74 Goldberg right here with the head swap. It doesn't have the yelling head sculpt on there. It has the regular head sculpt, and that looks pretty good right there. Very similar again. It's kind of unbelievable. Uh, with this new WrestleMania Goldberg, guys, this makes our fifth Elite Goldberg that we've gotten in our collections. And then last but not least, we have the, uh, this is the WCW 2-pack with Bret Hart Goldberg with the Elite 74 head sculpt on there. Or no, it's not. 
not. This isn't the Elite 74 head sculpt, I don't think. I think this is the two-pack came with the interchangeable head sculpt. So there is that for your Goldberg figure comparisons. But now that we have taken a look at every figure in this wave, guys, let's go ahead and build up our Paul Ellering figure. And I'm going to put this down so you guys can see exactly how we do this. So you have the legs that come with HBK. You have the young head sculpt that comes with Goldberg. You have Rocco and the arms that come with China. You have the torso that comes with Edge. And then you have the old head sculpt that also comes with Edge. So first up, we're just going to plug this torso into these legs. Actually goes on there very nice. Plugging in each arm. Probably going to point this up a little. Snapping that in and then putting the other arm on the other side. And then last but not least, we have to plop on our... I'm going to put on the older head sculpt here and just see how that turns out. God, that goes on there snug. But it is on there. And that is nice. I think that looks really, really good. They did a really good job on this Build-A-Figure. Yeah, that's really excellent stuff right there. And if you guys want to put Rocco on his arm, all you'll do is slide the hand. Or actually, maybe you pop off the hand. Maybe it's like the Fiend Bray Wyatt or the Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt. You unplug the arm and then you just stick the arm. Okay, yeah, that's how it's done. So you'll unplug the hand and then shove the arm up into the back of Rocco. And then I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to hold him while, uh, you know. I don't know how you're supposed to hold him while also plugging this into the back, you know, because it's supposed to go up in there and then he's supposed to be able to hold him right here in the front, right? Like this. But Jesus Christ. Anyways, if you just wanted him on display, you could just have him holding him there and that would probably work. But geez. All right. Well, there you go. Oh my God. Forget it. There's Rocco. There's Paul Ellering. There's the WrestleMania wave, guys. Before we get out of here, I do have to give two shots because we forgot to give one yesterday. We didn't plug one into yesterday's video. So give me just a second and we'll get into the shout out. So for these shout outs, guys, the first shout out is going to go to Chandler Sill. He says, yikes, I don't remember Dustin breaking his leg in the match, LOL. And he's referring to yesterday's review of the AEW Blood Brothers where I accidentally snapped my Dustin Rhodes leg in half. And yeah, that was pretty unfortunate. I am going to have to contact ringside about that. Hopefully I can get a replacement pack. We'll have to see about that. But shout out to Chandler for that, for that comment on our last video. I really appreciate it. And then our next comment is from Aiden B who says damn that's tough R.I.P. Dustin's leg also Jesus Dustin is huge and yes you know both of those guys are correct right there you know Dustin didn't break his leg in the match and the Dustin figure is pretty tall I was working on fixing that up and I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to do that but now that my left leg is snapped or one of my legs is snapped I'm going to have to uh, do something else with it so we'll just have to see about that oh yeah before we get out of here also I want to rank these figures real quick so huge shout out to them for the comments on yesterday's video but not including Paul Ellering I'm not going to include Paul Ellering in the ranking because he's a builder figure even though I guess he is technically in this set if you build him up maybe I can include him at the end but starting out at the bottom guys I got to go with the edge figure I'm just, my loose torso not big on the head sculpt torso looks wonky not very big on it next up I'm gonna go with ah uh, I'm going to go with Goldberg. I think that the Goldberg figure is really nice. It's just since we've seen it so many times, it's nothing new, really. We do get the Blue Universal title, but it's just bleh, even though it feels really good in the hand. Next up, we have Shawn Michaels. Really like the attire. Really like everything going on with it. Really nice flashback HBK. Now we need more modern HBKs. Ruthless Aggression era HBKs will be nice. And then finally, last but not least, guys, number one has to be China. Really like the China figure. I think it's pretty damn nice. It looks really, really good. I like the Women's Championship. It's just a really nice China figure great head sculpt and all the things going around and then if Paul Ellering was included I'd probably put him second or third I'd either put him here or right behind HBK but thank you guys for watching that is going to do it for the full Wrestlemania 37 build a figure Paul Ellering wave I hope you guys did enjoy the video let me know what you think of everything down in the comment section below where would you rank these guys which figure are you most excited for let me know down below comment and subscribe and leave me a like so you could potentially get a shout out in the next video thank you for watching subscribe to the channel and I'll think I'll see you guys in the next video Thank you. You crossed the line, I've been beaten.